Jen. Micah. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Jen. Micah. And Alan. I see that. And so you guys have a podcast. Uh, I've never seen that, right? Am I saying that correctly? It's, I never saw that. I never saw that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, yeah, we have a podcast about the years 1994 to 1996, the pop culture from those years. Um, when I was, uh, 16, which was in 94, I was sent away from home for two years to like the middle of nowhere in Montana to a therapeutic in quotes boarding school. Uh, so I missed all the pop culture that happened during those years. And our podcast is about uh, catching up on it and talking about it and talking about Montana a little bit too. You have anything to add to that, Micah? Yeah. And I'm her partner, husband, and um, I've seen everything. <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> actually, I haven't, I haven't seen everything, but I have the internet now. So it seems like I've seen everything and I can just look up anything and we can talk about it. Nice. So you guys cover mostly things that happened in between those years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So far, that's what we're doing. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun. You we guys have gone through my so-called life, right? You finished that. Yeah. yeah. How was that? We did the whole show. Oh my God. That show's so good. Have you seen that show? I've not. I've seen Homeland. Does that count? That's like part two, right? Uh, (laughs) That's that's that's, basically my so-called life two. Right. Yes, exactly. It's the second, (laughs) the second season. I actually have not seen Homeland, but I need to, um, the first season's good. And then it really falls apart. Oh, really? (laughs) yeah. Okay. Well, I'll watch the first season then. Um, yeah, no, it's a great show. I, it was. I, uh, I loved it. We loved it. It was a lot of fun to talk about and watch. And yeah, that was a lot of fun, but it's kind of cool to be done with that because our whole podcast was basically a, my so-called life podcast yeah. for a while. So, um, now it's kind of fun to just be doing like one movie at a time or whatever. Yeah, no, for sure. We just finished doing the hunger game series, me and Taylor. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And, uh, the last three movies are not that great, and there's only four movies, <laughs> so it was kind of. <laughs> it felt like a, a long walk through that, but. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we followed up my so-called was... life. Sorry, go which was a little no, heavy, um, and we really got into the characters and really invested in everything. We followed that up with uh, Batman Forever. Okay, there you go. Because we wanted something that was just more dramatic, easy to mm-hmm. make fun of. <laughs> Um, but so because of what you guys do on your podcast and we do movies, we thought it'd be fun to do a movie that fits within your time frame. And in yeah. na- 1994, Maverick came out <laughs> and I, I believe Jin hadn't seen it before. Micah, had you seen this before this? Or yes, this I your- have. Okay. I have seen it. Yeah. I saw it a few times. My, um, just some weird trivia. My brother works in the film industry and this was one of the f- films he worked on really early in his career. Yeah. Um, so I had seen it. What did you, did you like it back in the day when you originally saw it? I think I did. You know, I don't remember that much. I was, I don't know, 1994. So Jen, do the math for me really quick. I was 14. You I think. were 16. 16. <laughs> Thank you for doing the math for me, Jen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I was 16. <laughs> Um, See, what, so, the way you do it is you take the year you were born and then you subtract it yeah, from. Exactly. Oh, yeah. okay. Now that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Right. Yeah. You're a jackass. Um, <laughs> I always just said 14. I always just used the number 14. Um, I did see it. I don't remember exactly how I felt about it, but I mean, it's a fun, easy Western. It's hilarious at times. I'm and sure you. I bet you liked it at the time. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to speak for you. Yeah. So I was, uh, six in 94, but I'm sure I saw it much later than that. But I, yeah. I, wow. I really enjoyed this movie as a kid growing yeah. up. I, I really like Mel yeah. Gibson, uh, which mm-hmm. is weird to say now with everything. You know, yeah. I him, know his whole, I, yeah, <laughs> he kind of really that's, ruined that... liking him, but, uh, yeah. I know. And that's, 
that was something I thought about a lot watching this movie. I was like, oh my God, he was so, he was so charming and likable and lovable. And like, this was before anyone knew he was, you know, a douche canoe. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I felt really, uh, conflicted. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I did really enjoy watching him. Yeah. So what were you guys' overall thoughts of the movie? Micah, you go. Okay. Um, I enjoyed the first half, I mm -hmm. would say, like the, from, so it opens with him until the Indians, on a right? horse until they basically, no, I, I mean, I even thought that stuff was Graham Greene is so charismatic. The, mm -hmm. the guy that plays Joseph, yeah. like I, that was, I'm sure there's tons of stuff if we really wanted to tear it apart about how problematic that was, but I thought <laughs> it was actually a pretty progressive <laughs> view of like his view of native americans or whatever yeah, yeah. indigenous people was pretty yeah, progressive was for that time it, yeah. and i think even for the 90s like he had a relationship with these people and they weren't just portrayed as the typical western engines you know yeah um well but, uh, sorry I'll go ahead. no just that that whole scene to me felt like they were making fun of how ridiculous those stereotypes are. Yes. You know, yeah. and how like invested people are in them. Yeah. And also I think it was making fun of Dances with Wolves. Do you guys think? <laughs> which Am which I right about that? was also in. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I've ever oh, seen that. Oh, he was? Oh man. Yeah. Well, you were tiny little when that came out. Uh, cause I was like 12. You would have been two probably. Um, 90. Is anyway. That when it came out. I guess. I was born yeah, I think right? That's, so, right? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's right. Anyway, I don't know whether you should see it or not. I mean, it won Best Picture. I don't know why, but. <laughs> um. <laughs> see, see Goodfellas instead. I have seen yeah. it. about the same year. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I did sorry, like Mika. Maverick and I liked the, so it opens with him, with Mel Gibson on a horse, basically with a noose around his neck yeah. and rattlesnakes on the ground and then it it goes backward in time and we see how he got to that point. Um, and then when we get back to that point from that point onward in the film, it's just basically the poker tournament. Mm. And I didn't enjoy that stuff as much. Although the, I don't know if we want to give everything away, but all the twists and turns and everything at the end were fun because it's not just a Western. It's like a, a con movie. And, and there are a lot mm -hmm. of, lots of extra stuff at the end that you don't expect. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I really appreciated about this that I feel like they don't do much anymore is you have mm -hmm. a really, really flawed main character. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. he, he, he's insecure. He's incapable. Mm -hmm. He's not very good at fighting, but he's like <laughs> conning his way through everything and people are taking advantage mm -hmm. of him, even though he thinks he's taking advantage of other people. Yeah. And there's yeah. just so many layers right. of that type of stuff where now, like, I don't know if you guys saw Ready Player One, but this, that movie. Oh, I haven't yet. It, it drove me crazy because the main character was so capable throughout. He mm. never seemed oh. like he was struggling to get things done and he just, any, any issues right. that yeah. came up, he just knocked it out. And I feel like I've they, read the book. Yeah. I haven't seen the movie and I, I, that, I hadn't like quite put my finger on it, but yes, that was also frustrating. It was just kind of like you were following a guy playing a video game who was really awesome at the video game. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. No, I like, I, those are my favorite kind of characters. You know, the ones that you feel conflicted about. I mean, those are, that's how humans are. So, um, yeah. yeah I like Mel Gibson's too. good at playing those types of characters. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I also really liked the first like hour. Uh, and I mean, I liked the rest of it too. I just was like, I kind of, what I liked about the first hour was that it, it was setting it up. It set the scene so that you, what I liked was discovering how every single person was a con man, basically like everybody was messing with everybody and conning everybody. And that I thought that was really fun to watch that unfold. Uh, and then, you know, at the end I, it was just kind of predictable to me. Cause I was like, well, obviously I did not predict the part at the very end. Yeah. Um, Feel free to talk about it. This is okay, okay. 94. Yeah, so the, we're what? Right. 25 <laughs> yeah, years. I don't true. think we're going to spoil it for anyone. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm always worried about. Um, yeah, so you find out at the end that uh, Coop, the what is he, a sheriff or something? The law marshal. Um, he actually, I don't know if you guys man, know, right. but the Maverick was a TV series. And yes. He was Maverick, or he was Brett originally. Yes, I didn't know that until we watched this. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, so that was a nice touch. Um, but yeah, you find out at the end that he's Maverick's dad, which is a big twist. That part was, I did not see that coming. Um, but yeah, I, I, was I really enjoyed impressed. it. I thought, go ahead. I was really impressed with Mel Gibson playing a character that James Garner originated on TV with James Garner on screen with him most of the movie. Like, yeah. That's, mm-hmm. and he pulled it off. Mm-hmm. They, they had great chemistry. Did, well, did you, Micah, did you remember that James Garner was Mel Gibson's dad rewatching it? Did that stick out to you? Um, not at the very beginning, uh-huh. but about halfway through, I was like, Oh yeah, that's his dad. <laughs> Because I, I remembered, like, it's not just the Western, it's like the long con is going on. And then I started picking up on, oh, yes. Especially when the scene where Mel Gibson is, he approaches the fake Native Americans who had robbed the missionary wagon train. Yes. And he is, oh, yeah. like, talking James Garner and <laughs> Jodie Foster so much. <laughs> that's when it kind of clicked for me. Like, oh, yeah, he's piling it on a because that's his dad. I uh, I thought it was very entertaining. I, I was very entertained and it was very fun to watch. Um, <clears throat> one thing about it though is <laughs> I noticed the music right away and then oh, yeah. saw that it was by Randy Newman and I, it felt like being at Disneyland a little bit okay. because <laughs> the music is like Toy Story. And also I hadn't noticed before how much Mel Gibson's voice sounds like Tim Allen and or George Clooney to me. Uh, So I, I sort of (laughs) felt like I was at Disneyland for a lot of the movie, which was not bad. It was fine. Yeah. It just, it made it feel, I don't know, playful. Maybe, well, it was already playful, but um, I was struck by that. Yeah. Because the sets also seemed sort of like. The sets seemed kind of bad. They seemed. Yeah. Like they did not. Like Disneyland. Yeah. (laughs) They're like, I noticed yeah. that halfway through. I was like, wow, everything is really clean, like unnaturally <laughs> clean. Like yeah. you guys just built this set and we're like, oh, that's good. Yeah. We'll go. Right, there was like right. no weathering right. done or anything. Well, that's yeah, my that's brother's true. fault because he was a painter. Oh, oh it was, yeah. it was one of his first. Yeah. Well, let him know. Good. Let him know it stood out. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, don't worry. We will. <laughs> we definitely will. <laughs> I thought the landscapes were amazing though. Like they filmed in Utah and Arizona and Oregon and it was beautiful. But yeah, the, yeah. the little towns they built were yeah. just shiny as heck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a, really that's funny. another thing that, uh, older, not like, not real old, but like in the nineties before CGI was so accessible where they actually mm-hmm. had a film on location that makes, yeah. that makes it more grounded. Um, yeah. It's easier to to get lost in the story when there's not things sticking out. I mean, the painting was really bad, like right. <laughs> Especially the painting is what I noticed. Yeah, the, I like <laughs> pretty much anything that had paint on it was just <laughs> yeah. terrible. Yeah, that just like exactly. look at that horrible paint. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have that color back then. <laughs> no. Well, that's why he's not a painter anymore. He does special. Yeah, yeah stuff, he got fired so. clearly. Yeah, he fired us <laughs> right. Later. right. <laughs> but yeah, no, this, uh, I, I agree actually with you guys. Uh, I think the first half and probably after the Indians, but right around that time is when the movie really slowed down. But uh, up yeah. until that point is like, it's really fast paced. You know, they're setting yeah. things up, paying them off. And as they're doing it, they're setting up new things. So everything's getting yes. stacked on top of each other. So you're getting a payoff and a setup at the same time. That's paying off later. Yes. That's setting something else up. And so it's just this like constant, like not, not jokes per minute, but you're, you're getting these, uh, the kind of, I mean, yeah. We're, yeah. Like they're not, it's not like sitcom jokes, I guess is what I'm saying. It's not mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. cheesy jokes. It's like something that they, they set up and they, they pay off well. 
And I feel like the right. first half of this movie does that really, really good. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, you're right. It is, it does just slow way down. The mm-hmm. pace just sort of stops and, the, and then it just kind of goes on too long. Like they could have, they could have cut probably, I don't know how much of the movie, but probably 20 minutes at least for me. Um, yeah, it was, well, I mean, and, for it being a poker movie, there was way too much poker in this. Also, yes. <laughs> five card draw is the worst poker God, game I know. to watch. Yeah. Right. So it's so boring they, to watch. They set up all this great stuff and then the movie slows down a bunch. And then at the end, they kind of rush through, oh, it's all about this poker tournament that we see. Not very much of, but way too long. Yeah. And <laughs> then it kind of wraps up without any, like, the guy has amazing skills at seeing people's tells. He has, yeah. he's a great gunslinger. You do get to see that. And he's a great poker player, but he wins by magic, basically. <laughs> and yeah. he says that. Yeah. Oh my like, God, that's right. <laughs> he just wins by magic. Oh my God. He doesn't have what anything set up or planned. It's just. Yeah. What was that? Why? Well, Alan, explain that. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> explain yourself, Alan. <laughs> I, the thing I didn't get about all of that is if you're going through the effort to set the deck up so specifically, because mm-hmm. he's, yeah. the, the dealer's <laughs> dealing from the bottom with a, a set, yeah. a stack deck. Mm-hmm. Why would you allow <laughs> the ace of spades to be on top of that deck? You bury that well, somewhere in the middle. Well, I deal him the other four cards he needs. That's exactly. Yeah. They, he <laughs> dealt him well, four out of five cards for a royal flush straight, the royal, whatever so it's called. The reason yeah. for that is to bait them into betting big. So, oh, right. Like, okay. you have, that makes sense. Oh, okay. You have the, um, but then you gotta bury the ace. You're yeah, right. you, yeah, you gotta, you gotta make sure that whatever happens, that can't happen. Um, Who's yeah, the one card good. that will foil our plan? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he moved it with his mind. There you go. That, well, that's what he said. You know? It was magic. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I guess maybe we should explain how him. this all worked out. Why don't you, why don't you guys take it? What, explain the yeah. last hand of poker. It's probably the only one. Every, oh, God. Everything else doesn't really matter poker wise, but the well, last yeah, hand. Mike, Before that, so there's a scene where earlier yeah. in the movie, mm-hmm. Mel Gibson set this up by, he was narrating and explaining that when he was a kid, he believed that he could draw to any specific card in the deck, just make it appear. Um, and so then the final poker hand, Jen, you need to explain it because I'll screw it up. Oh God, do I? <laughs> <laughs> What do so you there's mean? only three I... people left. There's Alfred Molina's character, whose name I can't remember. Um, Angel. They called him at Angel. the end. Yes. His, I, I didn't know his name until the very end. Yeah, I don't think they really said it much, did they? Yeah. No. Uh-uh. There's Angel. There's the commandant who put on the tournament, James Coburn. And then Mel Gibson. Mm-hmm. They're the, the last three people. They call him They're Commodore. All... Commodore. That's right. Commodore. Oh. They're all in on this <laughs> last hand. And Angel has... What do they call it? Like a baby straight flush. He's got or a something. straight flush. Yeah. From like, yeah, it's like yeah. three, three four, or something. five or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then James Coburn, which is the second remember, highest yes, four, depending on. Yeah. It's, James Coburn has four eights, I think. Four no, eights. that was earlier. No, it's four eights. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. oh yeah. yeah. And he shows it by saying, I have two low pair eights and eights. Um, which clever. is the most annoying thing to do when you're playing <laughs> poker. So clever. Yeah, everyone and loves that. <laughs> Mel Gibson is dealt a royal flush without the ace, basically. Yeah, before mm-hmm. before he takes a card. Yeah. Um, and he notices the dealer dealing off the bottom of the deck. Well, now, mm-hmm. sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. He notices the dealer switch decks before he yes. Yeah. Right. Why would you not point that was, out? Because the dealer would have totally that second crazy. deck on him. I, yeah. Thank you. Because that whole time, first of all, the dealer was so obvious about it. <laughs> and secondly, why I did not understand that at all, that he didn't. I mean, there were, finally, after a while, he asked for a new dealer and a new deck. But it was too late what, at that point. Yeah, like, yeah. Why would you not? I know. I I. I guess he just believed in his own magic enough to, mm-hmm. <laughs> in other words, he's 
not that bright. But well, whatever. did you see those sideburns? Yeah, I mean, I mean those are pretty damn. magic. Yeah, <laughs> some magic there. Okay, so anyway, Micah, continue. So he complains and says that not that he saw the dealer switch decks, <laughs> which you're right, that would have yeah. been the smart move. He or complains. That he's dealing from the bottom. He doesn't even say what's happening. He just says, I want a new dealer. Yeah. I and want a new dealer, a new deck, and a, a fresh cut. I think it's some, something. Yeah. Like that. And they're like, yes. no, no that's we it. can't yeah. do that at this point. So you're stuck. And, then, and he says, and then just okay, nothing. well. Then it's just magic. Well, I just want Angel to deal me one off the top of the deck then. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, well, that's fine. Sure. Just have Angel do one. <laughs> and so he goes all in. And he says, okay, we're good. He, he has his card. And then they say, well, show us your card. And he's like, no, that's not, I'm not, I don't need to. So the, yeah, so he the actually, Commodore has to show his first. He takes a card, but he never he doesn't checks even look it. at it. And then he bets. Yeah. And everyone's yes. like, why are you oh, not looking right. at your card? Look at your card. And yeah. he's just staring at oh. him like a crazy person. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Which Alfred is another thing was... Mel Gibson is good at. Yes. That's a, I would say that's the best thing he's He's a, yeah. I think he's best at. Well, there especially we now. Yeah. Braveheart, Lethal Alfred Weapon. Alfred Molina was... It's all oh, yeah. All the way back to, like, Mad Max. Mad Max, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Intense eyes. Wow. Number one trait. He no does. I mean, his eyes are... They were very distracting throughout the movie. They are so bright blue. I mean, <laughs> I assume that they gave him contacts to make them even brighter, but... <laughs> Jeez, they're like, they're like the sky, you guys. Um, Alfred Molina was so pissed during that scene, and it was so funny <laughs> that, he, that Mel Gibson wouldn't show his card. Yeah, he did. I thought he I did great it. in this movie. By the way, just to... I did yeah. too. I, I loved Alfred I was Molina. Excited to see him at the beginning, and I liked that he was. There was one like little racist comment about him, about how he uh, smelled like refried beans or something. But then yeah. they didn't do any more of that, and they he didn't have like an offensive accent or anything weird like that. And then he was just a good sort of well, I don't he I was gonna say he's a villain, but he's not even a villain because Maverick is he's also a henchman. A villain if, I mean, yeah. Right. He was exactly. working for the Commodore to keep Maverick out exactly, and he did right try to hang him and cover him yeah, with true. rattlesnakes. <laughs> and <laughs> then he, he like... hit other people with a, a, a iron pan and oh, yeah, tied yeah, a rope around. He's definitely a villain, Jen. All right, yeah, he's a bit of a villain. Okay, <laughs> he's just yeah, not I the big bad. <laughs> I see that now. <laughs> but he's not a guy but, you'd want to hang out with. No, but when he, okay, so when he was trying to hang Maverick, was that also for the Commodore? Was that all part of that or was he just pissed off at Yeah. Him? I think he was just yeah, he, pissed his, off. Uh, I think right? he was, That's what but I thought. his goal, his goal was to keep Maverick from the game. He wasn't supposed to get to the game and then he tells him at one point, like, if you hadn't tricked me, cause he's playing poker with him earlier in the, the movie and yeah. he sets up this thing where these three or four guys rush in and say that he had conned them. And he fights them all barehanded, takes them all out. Um, and then later, Angel finds out that he had paid those guys to take a fall for him. So that's when Angel says, "Right, I was supposed to keep you from the game, and I would have left it at that. But then you screwed me. Oh. And yeah, I'm so it is because he's pissed off then. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I love that he sets him up in this, like, spaghetti western cliche of, you know, just kill the guy. No, we're going to put a noose around his neck, put him on a horse, and leave a <laughs> yeah. bag of rattlesnakes around the horse. <laughs> that was so funny. He'll never get out of this. Right, this and, then, and then we're going to ride off and not even watch it happen. Like, what's the yeah. point of that from his perspective? That's not even fun. I guess that guy's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I mean, most likely. 90% chance. Yeah, I don't know yeah, that was weird. if someone showed up, though, and you're sitting there watching a guy with a noose around his neck sitting on a horse surrounded by rattlesnakes. You might get yeah, yourself also in trouble. Yeah, a good point. You might look <laughs> <laughs> guilty. <laughs> yeah. I'm not helping that guy at all. But, <laughs> but then I it sucks so much when he just gets shot at the end. 
Yeah. Like, I didn't like yeah. it. I didn't like yeah, it. So, they just shoot him and that's it. <laughs> so, Mike, if you want to not- finish the uh, the final oh, hand. No, no, it's all right. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if I remember. Everything happened so fast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, they show their cards. The Commodore shows his cards. And then um, Angel shows his cards. And the Commodore's kind of surprised, like, oh, you beat me. And then Mel Gibson slowly picks his card up and sighs as if he's disappointed. But then he throws it, and it's this beautiful slow-motion shot of it landing <laughs> on the pot. And it's the ace, of course. Um, so he wins. And then is that when Alfred Molina just loses it? And it's, starts yelling, like, how did you know? How did you, you cheated? Yeah, you, you what cheater, did you do? or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he jumps up, and that's when James Garner shoots him. And Mel Gibson draws James Garner's other gun, because nobody's allowed to have any weapons on the boat that they're playing on, except James Garner, who's in charge of the whole security of everything. So he's sitting down, and Mel Gibson's sitting down, and he draws James Garner's other gun and shoots all the other guys that have guns that are in Angel's gang. Mm-hmm. And then everyone cheers <laughs> because yeah. that's the best ending to a poker game ever. My favorite line <laughs> is when the Commodore is like, "Your security is worth nothing. Everybody <laughs> yeah. has a gun in here." <laughs> yeah, yes. that was really funny. <laughs> oh, and James that, Coburn is great yeah. too as a as a villain, as a Western yeah. villain. Yeah. There were a lot of um, cameos and uncredited people in this movie too, like Danny uh, Glover. Yeah, Danny Glover yeah. in the bank robbery scene, yeah. um, and then Clint Black was the first guy that got thrown off the boat for cheating, the first gambler. Um, and I read that like Reba McIntyre was in the background watching, and then a bunch of the other poker players were old Western stars, huh. like character actors from old westerns. Um, which cool. a lot of them looked like they were old actors from Western. <laughs> I didn't necessarily recognize them. Like, kind of like, oh yeah, that guy kind of looks familiar, but he's super weathered right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, who was the guy? Who did you? Waylon Jennings was he? Oh yeah, Waylon Jennings made a cameo too. Oh yeah, yeah, interesting. And uh, Uncle Jesse from Dukes of Hazard. There you go. Oh he was God, the, the second cheater. You know what's funny, Micah, is when you said that we were watching it, we finished it last night, and Micah was like, hey, it's Uncle Jesse, and you know what I thought? Full House? Yep. <laughs> I thought Full House, and I didn't say it to you, Micah, because that's, I knew that you would judge me. But, that's John Stamos in a fat suit yeah, and a lot of makeup. Well, that's, that's what, what that was my first thought when you said Uncle Jesse, too. <laughs> yeah. I assumed you were talking you. about John Stamos, and I was like, I'm, I feel like I would have noticed oh. that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, yeah. Oh, because he would have had that goofy hair, and he would have been like in his twenties. Yeah. He would have stuck out pretty, pretty aggressively. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. In his white shirt and tucked into his Levi's, <laughs> singing his, yeah. like with his guitar. Those were his like no guys. Sure. <laughs> yeah, like right. jingles. Uh, but yeah, uh, so Maverick Foster. wins. Maverick oh, yeah, wins, sorry, yes. and uh, half a million dollars is all his for the taking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Except, unless, yeah. <laughs> Big twist number one: James Garner grabs the money and runs. Yep. Yeah, so he holds he everyone hostage. Holds everyone hostage because he's the only one with guns. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, takes off with the money, and the Commodore is about to snipe him. From the boat, yeah. <laughs> with just a tube. There's no, there's no glass in that. Right. You might as well put your finger, your make a circle with your fingers and look down it, and would have been as accurate. But Maverick stops him from killing yeah. James Gardner, who at this point he just we, has a pipe and a marble. <laughs> at this point, we don't know <laughs> Maverick and James Gardner are related. That Mel Gibson's right. character, right. Uh, but so he he saves him, and he's like. Money is not worth taking a man's life. He saved my life. He can have the money. And everyone cheers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everyone thinks that's so magnanimous and amazing. And all these people were just in a, like, $25,000 bond. <laughs> There's like, just dudes oh. around them dead. 
on the Money's floor. Money's no big deal. <laughs> so, do you guys know when this was supposed to take place? What year? I oh, did not question. know, and I was wondering throughout. Because twenty five thousand dollars, right, yeah. would be a ton of money, <laughs> right? Like yeah. millions. Yeah. Like, I, who? The, I mean, I would say probably. I would guess it'd be, it'd what? have to be in the 1800s, right? Yeah. Yeah, sometime. I or, mean, I guess it could have been early 1900s, I don't know. yeah. Cause the car, the first car came around right at the end of the 1800s, I believe. Mm. Right, yeah, I would say it was yeah, around the 1800s, t- probably. Yeah. So that, yeah, we were very struck by that. That's a, ton of money yeah it would be and the pot was half a million dollars which would be an insane sum to say no nah, it's all right let him sail away on his little boat with yeah. That. Right. yeah right also yeah that was a lot of money half a million dollars twenty five thousand dollars a piece that's like 16 people playing right am i doing the math yeah. now 20 people playing i think so there was a way think, more than 20, 20 people 20 yes it, it was 20 I think they said something like there are 20 people playing, but no, yeah, it's 20. Okay. But yeah. it looked like, yeah, there were tables full of people at the beginning. Yeah. I guess there's a lot of spectators, but yes. Who, who wants to watch <laughs> yeah, poker? True. I don't even want to watch it in this I movie. Mean... <laughs> Who's going to stand right. on a steamboat and watch? It's one right. thing if you're watching seven card draw now on TV where they have cameras that show you what everyone has. Yeah. But watching nope, on a still boat. still boring. It's just, well, can you imagine standing in that room in the back and being like, they're playing cards. I can see that they have cards and that guy put money in. Oh, I guess won. It, yeah, no, no, I can't. But it, it probably is pretty exciting. And it's like an event, you know, you're on the river boat yeah. and it's exciting because there's all this money on the line and people kill each other over this stuff and they do. And they did. <laughs> uh, we have not even talked about Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster is in this no. movie. Jodie Foster is also in this movie. So now we talked about that. <laughs> yeah. What did you and think about Jodie Foster? She's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, she's awesome. I love her. I don't. Jodie Foster is one of those people that I've always really respected as an actor. Like she is very talented, obviously. Things like taxi driver and just mm-hmm. she's had an amazing career bugsy malone but i've never yeah <laughs> i've never really been that into jody foster and in this movie i was like damn jody foster oh you're like really you good she was at hot? this and well she was kind of hot and she was really amazing her accent is terrible and yeah. it keeps changing and they talk about that and it's supposed to be and I almost think that's harder in a way. Like it'd be easy for me, but for somebody that's a trained actor to do a <laughs> shitty accent that changes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's true. She was, yeah, I liked her. We saw her boobs before we saw her face. <laughs> uh, I just want to point that out <laughs> because that's just something that happened. But yeah, she's, I, I thought she was pretty great. She was, uh, she was just always a step ahead of him and he kept falling for it. And it was so hilarious. Like when it got to the point where she seduced him and then chained him in the, <laughs> in the room. Oh God. I love that part. It's so funny. Yeah. She, their chemistry together is really good because they're both it really is. so playful in the movie. Yes. Even though they're doing I, terrible it, things to each other. They're still yeah, like yeah. having fun. Like that's kind of the whole, everything that happens in this movie, mm-hmm. Mel Gibson seems like he's just having a good time doing it. Either, he, yeah, I don't know and, if it's the character or just him, but yeah, there's just this Even undertone at the of end, fun. I kind of like, totally. so I can get kind of tired of those movies where it's the con and you're supposed to, you're supposed to figure out some of it and then they give you a little bit and then they just throw in a couple extra twists at the end. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I feel a little manipulated, but the thing I liked about this one is that she, she ends up taking half the money. Mm-hmm. So James Garner and Mel Gibson are in these amazing bathtubs, smoking cigars and drinking and just having a soak. And it's, it looks actually, I was thinking, man, that looks awesome. relaxing and nice. I'm yeah. going to do that. Um, yes. And Although they so had Mel to Gibson be in there first. for hours. 
Right. They would be <laughs> just one giant raisin by the time Jody Foster yes. showed up. Yeah, just <laughs> shriveled and white and wrinkly. Yeah. Um, Mel Gibson's in there alone at first, and James Garner comes in, and this is the big reveal that James Garner is his dad. He pulls a gun on him. Yeah. So like, you. Sorry, I don't mean to so interrupt. Dumb. Before we get to no, that, no, go. He, James Garner's in the woods. The Commodore Shore is there, mm, and they're yes. talking about, oh, you know, th- we did this, we did that, and then the Commodore is going to rob James Garner, who we're working together. Does he's it? Going to kill him. Yeah, he's going yeah. to kill him, and then Maverick shows up. So it's. You have one twist, a second twist, mm-hmm. now a yes. third twist with Maverick showing up. <laughs> right. Maverick yeah. takes the money back and throws them a gun and says, you know what? One of you kill the other. I don't care who. Turns out the gun is empty. Oh, that's right. James Garner punches the Commodore right in the face. And I, I don't think he kills him. Right? He doesn't kill no. him. No. He doesn't. He picks up a big so stick either. and says, like, I've never committed cold-blooded murder and I won't now or something. Yeah. Yeah. So we are, we're up to three twist endings right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just since the tournament ended. Yeah. 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 So yeah, then Mel Gibson gets away with all the money. Um, and James Garner makes a comment about how he'll, he'll hunt him down because his name's been ruined. He's, he's this marshal, which I'm never clear if was, was Maverick's dad really a U.S. marshal or was this some, character that they created that he or did he take someone's oh, identity good question um, i don't know yeah i don't know but he's I, yeah james well, oh garner yeah tells right maverick during the james garner tells maverick during the fight at the campfire with a commodore that he will hunt him down and find his money because his his name's been like he's been disgraced now he's been publicly you already like, said he all stole that. this money <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> We're in the past. I was going house, back because of the the sound issues. You already issues. did. Oh, so, sorry. Should we go back? No, yeah, we're good. Yeah, just keep going. <laughs> okay. So, James Garner does hunt him down, and he shows up at the bathhouse where Mel Gibson is having a schwitz, and he mm-hmm. pulls a gun on him and says, "You know, this is a big mistake you've made. You left your money, the money over there, with your gun on top of it, eight feet away from you, and he's going to rob him." You think, but then twist number four, four. is that four? Yeah. Where he reveals, <laughs> Mel Gibson starts saying, well, my pappy always said, and he screws up some saying, and James Garner says, I never said that. Yeah. They, but you, but just backing up for a second, he has been saying that throughout the movie. He's been saying things like, well, it's like my old pappy used to say. Yeah. So, yeah. And then his old pappy was James Garner. So then he gets in the tub. They're having a great time. Second They're smoking tub. cigars. I feel like that's important. A second tub, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Mel Gibson and James Garner are just making a man stew, sitting in the tub together. <laughs> <laughs> They're in separate tubs. Um, and then Jodie Foster comes in. With her, yeah, that, and, and that's like the very last twist. Pea gun. That, that yes. tiny little, yeah. yes. <laughs> her tiny oh God, little gun. Tiny. And she makes the same comment, like you left all your money here with your gun on top of it, six feet away from you. And they make a comment, no, eight. And mm-hmm. she takes the bag and she says goodbye and takes off. And the thing I really liked about that twist was that they, there's another saying that he screws up several times, but basically don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. Mel Gibson had, taken half the money and put it in his boots. And so she only got away with half the money and they weren't like you were saying he had so much fun throughout. He makes a comment like it's going to be so much fun to track her down. Yeah. 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 Cause James Garner's like, why would you leave any of your money in the satchel? Yeah. He's like, I don't Mm -hmm. know. He's like, yes, you do. He's like, yeah, yes, you do. Yeah. That's a great line. (laughs) Right. That's right. And it's, it's amazing to me that they didn't make a sequel. (laughs) <laughs> after that setup. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Good point. Yeah. I feel like, but especially right, at that's... this time in the nineties, early nineties, yeah. sequels were like, they weren't exhausted by that point. Like people, yeah. I feel right. like, especially this movie, it being as much fun as it is, would have been really well received having a sequel. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the original did pretty well, right? It was a big hit. I feel like. I think so. I, I don't know. 
I don't remember at the time people talking about it, but I, I feel like it, it did pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. But I did it, like, yeah. even though they didn't make a sequel, and I'm kind of glad they didn't, yeah. I liked that they just ended it there yes. and they were all kind of happy. And it's clear that the the game is more important than the money. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, these guys have <laughs> a quarter of a million dollars, which well, they're fine. Uh, and that's true. That's true for Jodie Foster, too, I think. Right. Yes. Like, she loves the game. She loves the con. and. But yeah, I thought that, I thought that part really captured the spirit of the whole movie. Really? When, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like that line. Jody, Jody Foster is set up as a thief throughout the movie. Yes. So when she yes. shows up to steal again, it's not really surprising. Although. Right. <laughs> like we said, that's the fifth twist. So it, yes. <laughs> I think it's the one that kind of, I think if you would have stopped it anywhere before that, you would have kind of felt like oh, that was too many twists. But for some reason, in that way, <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, that was the right amount of twists. Like, you brought it yes. back. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it was. It was kind of full circle. That's true. And yeah. also the, uh, the shirt, the line about the shirt is like, you know what we got? A half a million dollar shirt. I thought that was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, his shirts. I thought his obsession with his, with his shirts was really funny. I loved that. Yeah. Yeah, he gets, yeah, so he's, he, in the fake fight, he gets it dirty and he starts freaking out. But, yeah. Uh, well, and I, I felt like that was real. That was the only time that you could tell that he was real was when his shirt got dirty and he was upset about it. That seemed <laughs> yeah. like the only time that it was like he was being genuine and expressing a genuine emotion. That's why I thought it was so great. Well, and at the very shirt. end of the movie, he also, after he wins, he's just flabbergasted because he drew the right card and he babbles and can't talk. And yeah. I think that's the only other part where he's genuinely showing some right. real feelings. Where you're, where you don't think I can't tell if this is like, you know, if there's anything genuine, what he's doing, is he messing with people or not? Yeah. 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 I thought I really enjoyed. So the, throughout the movie, he's on a mission to get another $3,000 cause he, he saved mm-hmm. up $22,000. Mm-hmm. He needs 25 mm-hmm. and he's got three friends mm-hmm. who all owe him a thousand dollars. He's like, as long as I can get that money, I'm, I'm golden. <laughs> and the first one we don't see, but he talks about it and, uh, finds out that the guy died and the widow lied to him about how much money they had. And he, she, oh, right. she yeah. swindled him out of that money. So he was upset. And he's not, he's not dead. Like they never found the body. Oh, that's right. So that's what was it was. Just, yeah. Like he faked his death to get out of the. Well, no. The so death. she said we need the money for the funeral. Yeah. Right. right. That's right. That's and right. He's like, so there was no funeral. Yeah. So either he is dead, there is no funeral, <laughs> or he's still alive and they just kept the money. But yeah. <laughs> either way, he's out that $1,000. The yeah, the second was one funny. was at the, was it a bank? Yes. And uh, he asked his friend, he's like, hey, I need some money. And the guy's like, oh, I only got $100 on me. You know, I like, give me till the end of the month. I can, I can get you the rest. And he's like, I, I can't wait that long. I need it now. I'm trying to get to this game. He's like, Oh yeah, sorry, man. This is all I got here. Take it. It's the last. And Maverick is like, I, you know, I, I can't do it. You know, you got kids, you got your wife. I can't take the oh, last of right. your money. And that's when yep. Danny Glover shows up and robs the place. <laughs> yep. And the guy has mm-hmm. a, a trillion dollars. Tens of I don't know. Of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that's so yes. much yes. money in his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Maverick is like, what? How are you doing this to me? And then, uh, Joseph, the, the guy who was playing the Indian, right. he, he says, so he owes him money. He's like, I, I only got his rupees right now because this Russian guy is paying us. Once oh I get God, it, the Russians. <laughs> once I get it transferred or, uh, exchange, I can pay you. And he's like, but I have this idea. We'll dress you up and we'll let him hunt you and we'll mm-hmm. get him to pay. And so he tells him that, that guy only paid a thousand dollars when right, really he paid right. two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, you see like for how capable or not for how effective he is at getting what he wants done. He's really yeah. bad about going about it. Like he's just yeah. taking well, advantage and losing, you know, yeah, but you're right. And that's a great scene with Graham green too, where Mel Gibson tells him like, I just, I, I really, thank you so much for doing this for me after he gives him a thousand dollars. It started out like, I think I can get a thousand bucks from him. If he, if you let him shoot you basically, <laughs> um, and I'll give you, I'll split it with you. I'll give you 500 and I'll give you like, all right. 
But then he talks the guy into 2000 and tells Mel Gibson, like, Oh yeah, I talked him up to a thousand and he gives right. him that. And Mel Gibson's that, like, yes. I, I really appreciate this because I feel like even my friends lately have just been screwing <laughs> yes. me over. And yes. it's so good because he's like, Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> well, no, he says, <laughs> what, are they, to you. what are friends for? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh my God. That's right. Oh, Graham Greene was really funny. That's true. Like, was there a single character in this movie that wasn't a swindler or swindling somebody? <laughs> I feel like Alfred Molina was the only one. Like, he was just sort of straight up. He was, I think a he was. Henchman. Like, he. Yeah, he was authentically him. He never seemed like yeah, he exactly. lied. He was just very aggressive. He wasn't messing with See, anybody. He's a he good was guy. just. <laughs> yeah, guys. This is what I was saying. <laughs> This is how He's Trump the got elected. Hero of the movie. Oh, yeah. God. Just oh, God. straightforward henchmen. Yeah. You, as long as you're honest, people will, will trust yeah. you. That's really true. That's oh. really true. God. All right, fine. I hate Alfred Molina now. <laughs> um, the the gunslinger. He didn't really swindle, but he wasn't in it very long. Yeah, the gunslinger. The the gun I can't even John, think of who that is. John Harden at the beginning. Johnny Harden. Mm-hmm. At the, the very first poker game. Oh, the oh, oh, right. Mel Gibson. Which yeah. is actually a real, he was an actual, like Johnny Harden was a real gunslinger yeah. in the 1800s, right? Oh, okay. Like yeah. there was some, I don't know. And that's why Mel Gibson, when he says his name, Mel Gibson drops all his chips and money because he's so, mm-hmm. he's, but he's I playing, but. Yeah. I didn't which get I thought, that reference at all. I, I really, I think Mel Gibson was really good at in this movie. Being able to to switch from pathetic to threatening, at mm-hmm. just with you know nothing, he just he's like sniveling yeah. like oh yeah you know like to take as much money as you want and then he just pulls his gun out on him instantly. Oh like, man, mm-hmm. that I really liked that scene. I loved the, the way they set up his character that way because he, I wasn't sure yet, <laughs> you know mm-hmm. where he yeah. stood or where he was coming from and then he he was kind of he was intimidating he was scary right then yeah and then and uh, then he can switch back really quickly to being funny and say like was that fast that felt pretty fast or no jody foster says that that, she's like was that fast (laughs) yeah that was great but yeah so i think overall this is this holds up pretty well i find that movies from this time the comedies i enjoy Mm -hmm. more than a lot of the comedies now Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because back then the jokes were were more visual more about what you're seeing and yeah now a lot of the things are more either uh in reference to something else or just outrageous and it, right it's not fun it, it can be funny or it can be shocking or you know it can make you laugh no but you're it, right it, it's not light-hearted and fun in the same way you're totally right and that's what this mo- i and that's that's it was very fun and it was fun to watch and it was and it did have that lighthearted sense about it and um yeah i didn't think about the fact that there's a lot of slapstick that makes it funny yeah um which i love and i think you're right there's a lot of movies now that they feel like plots or scripts that are written around some jokes that they wanted to say right yes, yes totally and this is like, it's fun. It's an adventure. You're going along for a ride and there's also some witty banter and there's some jokes. Um, but it's a good script. Like, yeah. Other than the problems at the end where we talked about the pacing and some other things, like it's a fun mm-hmm. movie and it does hold up. Yeah. And, um, I agree. And I thought it, it's kind of a parody of Westerns. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It also is still a Western. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, they did that really well. Like it other wasn't than the paint. as ridiculous. Other than the paint, as, the paint, yeah, paint sucked. I, like every time I saw oh. painting, I I got a little <laughs> nauseous. I have to be honest. Like, I, I felt I'm physically. I'm sick. getting nauseous now. Yeah, it, just, just even talking about it is it's very it's really upsetting. upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right though. That like it wasn't as as like crazy as like blazing saddles yeah. which is funny mm-hmm. but it's so obviously a satire i mean it's so over the top in that mel brooks way um you know uh, yeah it was 
Well, cause, so like if you take out the scenes of Maverick paying people off or being mm-hmm. weak, then it's like mm-hmm. a classic Western. You yeah. Know, him fighting the yeah, guys and right. winning, him playing poker, him escaping right. dangerous situations. If you cut out yeah. all his weaknesses, then it's like, oh yeah, this is like a typical yeah. thing. Yeah. But adding Absolutely. in those moments really kind of like grounds the character for you. You're like, oh no, this is yes. not a superhero. This is, this right. is, this makes sense. <laughs> I understand how this guy exists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I liked that it was fully a Western, but it was also a comedy and mm-hmm. it was also like a con movie. And mm-hmm. it, there was a point in the fifties, I think, where there were more Westerns made than any other genre mm-hmm. of movie. Like they were just cranking them out yeah, constantly like and they were super formulaic. Now. Yeah, exactly. Oh um, my God. Yes. And they were super formulaic. And like you said, the guys were just, there was nothing. They had no weaknesses. They had no, unless it was a woman or drink or something, but, yeah. but it wasn't ever played for laughs. And I love, I think Silverado came out, well, pro- well probably several years before this, but have you seen Silverado? I have not. That, it's, I think you would really, really enjoy good. that movie. It's really good. Because it's a good Western, but it's also really funny and fun. It's not as well, funny as, it's not as lighthearted and comedic as this no. one, but. It's got a great ensemble cast and yeah, it's fun. It's a fun adventure. Yeah. I think it's Kevin Costner's best role, honestly, ever. Yeah. More than 10 yes. cup. Have you seen 10 cup? Um, <laughs> I haven't seen 10 cup. <laughs> oh, then you shouldn't be going around saying things up? like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you right now. So well, sorry. see Silverado cause he's, I don't like Kevin Costner and he is glorious in Silverado. He's really, really love, kind of like Mel Gibson in this one, actually. He's, he's like playful and lovable and Mm -hmm. charming. So Tin Cup came out in 96. Oh, Oh, wow. Oh, (laughs) no. I might have to watch that. I did not realize it was that soon after. Maybe, Alan, you're going to have to guest on our show for that one. I will totally do that. Maybe that's what we should do. I love Tin Cup. Yeah. It's a golf movie. Just so you know. Yeah. But it's fun. Oh, I know. I know. And that's <laughs> part of the reason <laughs> that I haven't seen it aside from my personal story. Hey guys, guess what I have in my head? What's that? The theme song to I Seen That. Did you want to sing it? <laughs> it's just running through my head. The Oh, uh, Jen's very good at singing songs and she barely knows. Oh, is that what you said? Do mm-hmm. I want to sing it? No, yeah, thank yeah, you. sing it. Good. Oh, come on. No, no, no. It's sing in your it, head. Jack. That's the best way to get it out of your head. Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They're best friends, but they always disagree. I don't know the rest. I know, that's pretty good. I don't, I, I also don't thank know you. the part that you mumbled through. I can't think of what it is now. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. You will always just hear mumbles and it will drive yeah. you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, one last thing before we wrap this up yeah. that I just, the point I wanted to make that we kind of talked about for a second was, uh, Westerns when, mm-hmm. like when I was a kid, Westerns were these old, like, yeah, oh, I don't want to watch that. That's a Western. Like that's, that's boring. Mm-hmm. Type yes. Of thing. Yes. It's really weird to think about superhero movies being that for our kids, but that's definitely oh. what it's going to be. Oh yeah. That's such a good point. Like. We're going to be like, oh, you oh, got to yeah. watch Iron Man. You're going to love it. It's so cool. And they're like, oh, I don't want to watch yes. that. I don't want to watch Dirty like, Harry. Oh my God. I don't want to watch. That's you know? a boring old person movie. Yeah. That's going to yeah. be. Yeah, you're not totally that far right. Off. It yeah, totally because is. It's been because... so saturated. Exactly like yeah. you said, Micah, in the 50s. Like, it's so saturated. I mean, I feel like every movie is a superhero movie now. Yeah. Most it, of them. That's a good basically point. basically is. Yeah. I was listening recently to one of your episodes where you talk about how you guys aren't looking forward to um what's the new one infinity gauntlet infinity <laughs> yeah, stones infinity the, war uh, infinity war yeah and i was like really come on those movies are pretty like just plain and fun and i, <laughs> I never first, thought about them that your much. first word was plain <laughs> yeah well yeah, <laughs> i, know, I right? cannot i've That's seen all the iron man movies what are there like eight Three. of them now well it depends and, on how you count them yeah I could, obviously, if I read about the plot or you reminded me of who was in them, even the Captain America ones and the, all the, all of them, I, 
can't differentiate them. No. I Why cannot. did you say plain? <laughs> because they they're, are. They're, they're great, the same guys. movie they're over plain, and over. They're boring. You know, <laughs> they're like were not engaging. How, right? I was trying, trying to, to say how they're how just like they are. fun popcorn movies and they're not like... Oh. I just but, go into it with this low expectation at this point because they all seem exactly the same. Like, oh, there's a problem. Oh, there's going to be a fight scene that's choreographed exactly the same as all no. the other fight scenes. Well, and I, did they you guys are like see the Black, westerns. Black Panther? Well, I have not seen that yet. Not I really yet. want to see that I'm one. So to see it, that one kind of burned yet. me. I think it was kind of the final straw that really, really kind of ruined it for me. Was one, oh, you have all the political commentary on it about how it's like the best movie ever and it's so great and it, it's just average as a movie. Yeah. As a superhero mm. movie. Yeah. And so it was like, I went into it thinking like, oh, this is going to be important for yeah. society. And it, it was not. Uh, I mean, it's cool mm. that all the, everyone in the movie is black, but if that's the most notable thing about your movie, you probably didn't make a great movie. Um, <laughs> but the Black Panther's ability is basically hand to hand fighting and it looked like oh. a PlayStation 2 video game. And I was like, mm-hmm. why, really? why are you dedicating a third of the movie to something that you're not mm-hmm. doing well? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like that's, oh, uh, that's interesting. I, I have to see it. So and... bored throughout, but I know oh, people bummer. loved it. Yeah. It's like the highest grossing Marvel well, movie it... of all time now. It's just... And it has been important. I mean, it has been really important yeah. to a lot of people, but, um, but yeah, I, it's not a good movie though. That's the problem. Right. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I listened to your wonder woman episode too. And you guys talked about Ooh, that, that that's similar thing. Like, pretty much the same. Like yeah. your movie needs to be good if you want to, if you want it to speak to people or make a statement, which, yeah. you know, is definitely true. Yeah. It is, if you, um, if your goal is to pro- make progress, in society, mm-hmm. you can't do it by pandering to who you're trying right. to make progress for. And that's what Black Panther right. was, and that's what Wonder Woman was. And they were both mm-hmm. very frustrating to watch. Well, I haven't seen either one, so I can't really... I can't comment, I did, but I'm going to see them both. I saw Wonder Woman, and I I guess I just have a lower bar because I, I am not thinking of them as good films to begin with. <laughs> I'm just thinking of them as like blockbuster films. Yeah. Like huge. fun, yeah. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and, and that's perfectly the exact intention you should go into it with. For right. me, I saw them both. Well, I saw Black Panther right when it came out, but I saw Wonder Woman almost a year after it came out. And the mm-hmm. hype around Wonder Woman was, this mm-hmm. is amazing. This is so yeah. good. Like, they knocked it out of the park with this one. And mm-hmm. when I saw it, I was like, no, they did not. There's no, a, this isn't that great. <laughs> there's a line that's in the exactly- middle of the movie where uh what's his name chris evans no chris, chris pine chris pine chris pine chris pine yeah. tells wonder woman like this is no man's land you cannot go mm-hmm. in there no man's land means <laughs> yeah. no man can cross it and i was like are you kidding oh. me this is the worst right. line in any movie i can imagine <laughs> yeah it's so dumb. Right. And surprisingly she does go in there yeah. What? Well, yeah, you never see it coming. <laughs> yeah, who saw and she survives? <laughs> I, my sister-in-law had the same take on Wonder Woman. So, and I, for some reason, like, I actually like hearing you say this about it because I felt like I should be really excited about it. And I was excited that other people were excited about it and that it meant something to them. But I really, I wasn't really feeling it. Like, I, I've, I haven't had that much interest in seeing it. Black Panther, I really do want to see. But my sister-in-law, too, was like, it's not as, it's not that great. And it's not, she, her take also was like, it's not as feminist as everyone's, you know, thinks it is. And Black Panther is not? No, no, uh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Shut up. Um, I do think, I think societally it makes, like, I think it's cool that they had an almost all female cast and uh-huh. a female director. Yes. I think yes. she was the first female director in the Marvel or that's not Marvel in the, in any of the superhero right. movies. Mm-hmm. Um, except no, I read about that too. There was another one before that people were like, um, Punisher. excuse me, how are Warzone. you forgetting about this? This not so, good either. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> <laughs> but, and it's, I think it's actually kind of sad that we're at this stage in 2018 and we're like, Hey, they let a woman direct it. Yeah. Yay. Mm-hmm. Like, that well, of course be... that's sad. Yeah. 
And the same thing for Black Panther. Like, it's an all black cast and there's a black director and that shouldn't be, that's something we should celebrate. It's also something we should realize. Why are we celebrating this at this point? Yeah. <laughs> this well, should have been done already. Also, like, I, I, I see the importance of both of those movies and like why they're important. I wish the studio mm-hmm. would be like, you know what? This is really important. Let's put extra yeah. effort behind this so we can right. show the reason why this should happen is because we can make well, good movies. And there's like, they put mm-hmm. more money into it to make more CGI. Oh. I mean, what do you want them to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, no, I think that's a good point. I mean, again, I haven't seen either of them, so I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, it will they, be yeah. interesting to look back in 50 years or even sooner and have our kids say, like, no, I don't want to watch that. It's an old person movie and see what their perspective on it is, too. Like, really? This was the first first female director of a superhero movie? I mean, it's okay. Yeah. But... Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, like no one's talking mm-hmm. about Wonder Woman anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you guys said that on that episode, I was like, Oh wow. That's, that's true. I feel like, I feel like Black Panther is going to have, I, my, my impression is that people, a lot of people did think Black Panther was a really good movie and it, it will have a more lasting impact. And, but you were totally right. I, I would kind of did yeah, just be, stop hearing about Wonder Woman. I'd be curious to know what you guys think about Black Panther now that the hype is yeah. pretty much gone too. Yeah, like people are still I seeing it, but I... people don't really enjoy it. Also, one of the weird things—I don't mean to make this political again or even bring it up about <laughs> Trump—but people really love Wakanda, and Wakanda uh-huh. is basically what Trump wants to do with the walls and not letting foreigners in and like all this other oh. stuff. And people are like, oh. "This is the best place ever," and it's like, "Hey, what? Oh. Maybe." <laughs> Take two seconds to think about what you're saying and what you're considering before you. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, but it's from okay. a different perspective too. Like they, they were protecting themselves from outsiders that were. Their well, own. yeah, like but destroying that's what this country started too. Well, that's what Trump says <laughs> he wants to do. It's, <laughs> it's a different take. Like I think, uh, yeah, um, we could get to that. But I mean, I the also, whole so I the whole movie. Some, I mean, I won't, I I don't want to spoil anything. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Don't spoil anything. We have to see. I it. did see some funny tweets and things after the movie came out where white women were like posting, let's all move to Wakanda and make Hillary our president there because it's so great. And people like people are like, you're already people on Twitter were like, please stop. It doesn't <laughs> exist. Don't colonize our one fake place. You're already have. colonizing it. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. Was- well, on that oh. note, sorry to make it weird. Yeah. <laughs> but That's uh fine. and Maverick. <laughs> well, can you tell me Maverick about your guys' was- podcast? Um yeah, didn't we already do that? Yeah. Or do you want to Yeah. Did- the- so how, how, just again to remind people how they can find it and oh, what, what okay. you guys talk about. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Micah. Oh, I'm doing it. Okay. Um yeah, we have a podcast called I Never Saw That and we are on iTunes. You can find us there. We're on Twitter at Never Saw That Pod. We're on Instagram at I Never Saw That. And we have a Facebook group that we would love to have anyone join and interact with us if you're interested. Um, so far, mm-hmm. we've covered. We do... What have we talked about? My so called life. We do have Batman, a web... Cool Runnings, Batman Forever. The worst Hackers. of the Batman films. Hackers. <laughs> Empire Records. The Rancids, worst of the Batman films? Uh, Are you counting Justice League? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We're not counting No, no, those. no. Just of the four. Just of the group of four from like eight or... When did the first one come? 89 to 88, 90 89 to 97. Yeah. 97. Anyway. The Tim Burton ones. The Those four. Yeah. And those were all the two weird. Tim Burton ones they're like, the two J- Joel Schumacher. You had actors and directors carrying across different movies. Yeah. But, uh, sorry. Yeah, that was a, yeah, it was a, it was very weird because, yeah, anyway, another topic for another time. But, uh, also we have a website, which is I never saw that.com. I think that's all our stuff. Cool. Well, thank you guys for coming yeah. on. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for very having much. Us. It was this fun was to watch Maverick again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was, I'm glad you suggested this movie because, yeah, it was a lot of fun to watch. Because there's a lot of bad things that happened 
in the nineties. So this is, this is one of the ones that's not too bad. Yes. We are discovering those. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thanks again, guys. Uh, Taylor and I will be back yeah. in a couple of days. I don't know what episode is coming out then. I don't think we've recorded it quite yet, but whatever that is, it's coming out soon. And, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at I seen that pod. And, uh, yeah, that's it.